welcome to Use Bike Heaven with me, Fran Robinson. Each week, one lucky punter gets to test three bikes that we feel suits their lifestyle, needs and pocket, and then we furnish them with all the facts they'll need to make a purchase. This week, we've got three sporty bikes for our guests to test out and hopefully enjoy. And as always, our resident expert, Rod Gibson, will be on hand to give some essential tips on the pros and cons of second-hand ownership. So, on with the show. Let's meet this week's test rider. Cliff Buckley is an air conditioning and extraction system designer from Stourbridge in the West Midlands. Cliff has been riding bikes since he was 10 years old, having been involved in motocross, speedway and road racing. Also with us today is Cliff's wife, Sue, who's here to help them find the right bike. They currently own a 20-year-old GPZ750, but feel it's time to look for a new bike. They're on the lookout for something with comfort, power, reliability and heaps of fun. I'm sure we can come up with a selection to fit this bill. Cliff and Sue have a budget of £5,000 and have been riding together for so long they know exactly what they want. With this in mind, we've chosen three well-renowned bikes, all of which have the attributes to which they aspire. All our bikes are between two and seven years old and are more than capable of meeting Cliff and Sue's requirements. So, let's see what the first bike is today. First up is the Yamaha R1. Introduced in 1998, this bike was Yamaha's response to Honda's mighty Fireblade. The R1 instantly became the bike to have for all aspiring speed merchants and proponents of one-wheeled antics. It featured an all-new engine making a claimed 145 brake horsepower and was virtually a race bike for the road. The uncompromising riding position makes this bike very focused and not ideal for huge mileages, although many R1 owners will disagree. Combine that with a high pillion perch and this bike may not provide the outright comfort that Cliff and Sue are looking for, but will give them more performance and fun than they can shake a stick at. So Cliff and Sue, your first bike of the day is the Yamaha R1. What mm. do we think? Very nice. It's a thing of beauty. Is this the kind of thing you're looking for? Uh, definitely, a sports sports orientated bike. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, have you ever been on one of these? Yes, my friend of mine, Timmy, has got one. He loves it. No, yeah, does he? Oh, <laughs> as right long as his wife. He'll be interested to know what you think about it then. <laughs> That's not the biggest pillion seat in the world. It's not, is it? No, and you're going to be no. doing many miles, aren't you, Sue? Mm. Yes. Well, we'll be doing quite a few, yeah. yeah. The power will certainly be there for some touring. So. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's what we're interested in. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really love these. I think they look great. So, uh, I think you need to get your helmets on and let us know what you think. Cliff and Sue are testing a 1999 R1, which is on a T-plate and currently for sale at £4,800. This is one of the first R1s and as such has seen to have been the best so far. As a result of its race heritage, this bike may well have seen some serious abuse, so make sure to check the headstock bearings and front wheel for signs of one-wheel shenanigans. Always check for a good service history on bikes like the R1 and make sure to carry out the relevant checks for insurance claims and outstanding finance. It's quite common for bikes like this to be customised by their previous owners, but do not pay over the odds for a flash bike, no matter how much you like it. So Cliff and Sue, that sounds very sweet. What did we think? Beautiful bike, handles absolutely fantastically, mm -hmm. but for me, the engine power delivery was a little bit too harsh, yeah. too sudden, too abrupt. Yeah. So, overall, the bike was fantastic. Yeah. Handled beautifully, absolutely gorgeous, light as a feather, like a BMX bike. Sue, so, what did we think of the, uh, the pillion seat? Not very comfortable, very hard. I knew you were going to say that. Very hard. Yeah. It, it, I mean, leg position wise. Was it? Because right, yeah. that's quite extreme as well. Yeah, you are like jockey style. That's about fine. That, no problem. That seat is very, very hard. You did say sport, so we thought, right, sport. Mm -hmm. Throw this. Oh, but it, it is. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's an mm. absolutely cracking bike. It's gorgeous bike. Mm. But we've got to look into the, the thing that it's. It is two of us, and we are going to be doing a lot of two up. Yeah. Work on it. So. Yeah. And it's not two of you round Donington. It's two of you going round Ireland. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay then. Well, we're going to give each bike a score. Yep. So, Cliff and Sue, what do you give the R1 for style? Well, we've got to give that a 9 because it is a beautiful looking bike. And performance? Again, 9. Awesome machine. <laughs> Practicality? We'll have to go lower on this one because it's not practical for both Sue and I. And reliability? 8. Definitely. And value for money? This particular model, 7. 
So Cliff and Sue, that's bike number one, the Yamaha R1. Didn't do too badly at all on the scoreboard. No, no not at all. Beautiful I do bike. Like it. But you don't have to decide just yet because we've got bike number two, which is a bike that makes all the right moves. Next up, it's the Kawasaki ZX9R. Kawasaki's one-time cutting-edge sports bike is now seen more as a sports tourer. A slightly upright riding position combined with comfortable seating makes this bike ideal for long-distance travelling. Sadly, a tank range of only 150 miles before refilling means this bike is not at the top of many people's lists for touring bikes. Performance is good with this smooth inline four engine pushing the ZX9 along at a very credible but highly illegal speeds. Handling too is very good, allowing you to have plenty of fun when you reach your final destination. But will it give Cliff and Sue just what they're looking for? Right, Cliff and Sue, on to bike number two, the Kawasaki ZX9R. What do we think? Hmm, very, very nice. nice. Really? Yes. Lots of people say it's not green. Oh. I've got a Kawasaki. It's white. Oh, then you're all nice. right with a red one. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. This pillion seat looks very nice. Sir. It looks very comfortable. And the handles, yes. Crab rails, very good. So you don't think they look dated or anything like that? No, not really. I don't think so, no. I think you should get your helmets on and let us know what the performance is like. Cliff and Sue are testing a 2002 ZX9R on an O2 plate, which is up for sale at 4995. At this price, the ZX9R appears to be extremely good value. Make sure to examine the condition of these bikes, as this will give you a very good idea of how the bike has been treated. There aren't many areas of concern when it comes to ZX9Rs, but the one thing that does crop up is carb icing, so make sure to check the carb heaters are fitted and working. Regular servicing is vital on all bikes, so make sure to check the service book for relevant stamps. As always, check for outstanding finance and insurance issues. So, Cliff and Sue, the Kawasaki ZX9R. Absolutely terrific. Green Factor 10. I love it. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm reading between the lines here, Sue. I think you like it. I think so, yes. Tell me why. It's the power delivery is smooth, it's responsive, the suspension tells you exactly what it's going to do, nothing naughty about it, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Is it comfy? Very, very comfortable. So you can imagine no, doing some miles? Yeah. I could, I could sit ride this bike all day long, no problem at all. It's really? not so radical as the R1. Sue, tell me what it's like being on the back there. I could be on the back all day. It's really very, very comfortable. Really? Very, very comfortable. Yes. How are you with the grabs then? Because you're used to one at the back, aren't you? Mm, yes, but no, they're fine. Fine. Yeah. Soon get used to them. Really? Absolutely. Power nice for you as well then? Yes, very good. I want to take this bike with me now. Really? <laughs> Definitely. Should we bother going to the scoreboard? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's anyway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So, Cliff and Sue, what do you give the ZX9 for style? Ooh, way, hey, 10. <laughs> and performance? Again, 9. Practicality? Uh, for the both of us, 9. Reliability? 9. <laughs> <laughs> you like this bike, don't you? Oh, I sure do. <laughs> Value for money? Uh, 9. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, Cliff and Sue, a whopping score of 46 out of 50 for the ZX9R. So, I think you safely say you preferred this to the R1. Oh, yeah. I think I'll give it 50. Oh, round it up. Why yeah. not? Well, you can't decide yet. I'm not going to let you because oh, you've right. still got another bike to go. OK. But before we go to bike number three, it's time to go over to Dr Rod, who's going to give us some essential tips on making your life with a used bike run smoothly. Now, we frequently talk on Used Bike Heaven about the desirability of checking for accident damage when you're looking at second-hand bikes, and usually that's quite easy to see, but unfortunately it's not always quite that simple. On this bike, for example, everything looks fine at the front end, but these forks have actually been accident damaged and they bent. Now, a very easy way to tell that, I've slackened off these pinch bolts on the fork leg, and if I now put a spanner on the top of there and turn the fork leg down here, you can see that movement there. And that's a pretty clear indication that this fork stanchion has been accident damaged and it will need replacing. So what do we do to put that right? Well, there's a certain amount of dismantling involved. The first thing to do is to remove the front wheel. I've cheated here slightly by already slackening this nut off, but if I take that nut off there, now I should be able to pull the wheel spindle out like that. That's a speedo drive going, and we've just popped the wheel to one side. 
That now leaves me with the fork legs supported in the yokes up here. Now on this particular bike what I'm going to do is separate the fork legs into two parts. The bottom part here has a slider and the top part is the stanchion. And you can see that's how it moves up and down. Now on this one in order to separate that there's a circlip in here that I need to take out. So I'm using special circlip pliers for that. They just pop in there. This is just a slightly tricky little job so I'm going to use a little screwdriver to help me pop that out. Oh there we go, it's come out quite nicely. And on this bike I have cheated slightly by removing the spring and gator which normally lives on there. Now the scary bit is now to pull this off the bottom of the stanchion. There are bushes in here and if I bash that down like that, there we go, that's the top bush released from the top of the slider. And that can be the scary bit but as long as you've taken the circlip out first it will come away. That's the slider removed from the bottom of the stanchion. On here now you can see the fork bushes, these are the bearing surfaces, and that's the fork seal that keeps the oil into the bottom of the fork leg. The next step now is to remove the stanchion from the yokes. To do that, first of all, I'm going to take this bolt out of the top. Now if I slacken this pinch bolt off again on the bottom yoke, I should now be able to pull the stanchion down out of the yokes. And there it is. And you can see there's actually been signs of bodgery on there too. Someone's had a go at this in the past. And you may be able to see, if I sight that up that way, you can now tell how badly bent that is. And that wasn't obvious on the bike. In order to repair that, I'm going to have to replace both of these two stanchions and simply bolt it all back together. And that's the bike fixed. And we'll be hearing more from Rod later in the programme. So far this week, Cliff and Sue Buckley from Stourbridge have tested the Yamaha R1, a bike that stirs the emotions in many a rider, and the ZX9R, another bike with plenty of thrills. After the break, we'll be revealing bike number three, and we'll see how it shapes up against bikes one and two. See you in a mo. Welcome back to Used Bike Heaven. This week, Cliff and Sue Buckley from Stourbridge are looking for something with power, comfort, reliability, and fun by the bucket load. So far they've tested the Yamaha R1 and the Kawasaki ZX9R and are about to go out on their third and final test. Let's see what bike number three is. Last bike of the day is the Honda Blackbird. Honda started a top speed war with the introduction of their Blackbird in 1996. With a top speed of over 180 miles per hour, it stole the crown from Kawasaki's ZZR 1100 and also brought with it improved levels of comfort and safety. The Blackbird was the first production bike to feature the linked braking system, which was greeted with mixed feelings by the public and the journalists alike, but did allow the average rider to brake in confidence. This is a bike that genuinely offers the ability to cover huge miles in plenty of comfort, and once you're there, you can unstrap your luggage and scratch to your heart's content. So Cliff and Sue, your third and final chariot, the Honda Blackbird. What do you think to the looks of this? Very nice. Yeah, looks nice. Yeah. It's just a big, comfy, lot of miles kind of bike, isn't it? Yeah, and that could be advantageous. What do you think of that pillion seat? It looks very comfortable. Doesn't it? Like the rear grab yeah. rail. Right, well, there is only one way to find out. You That's know what right. I'm going to say, don't you? Helmet's on. And let's see what you think. Cliff and Sue are testing this 1997 Blackbird priced at 3999 the Blackbird may not be as sporty as the R1 or the ZX9R, but it is more than capable of giving surprising levels of handling, as well as the legendary performance for which it's renowned. This bike, on the whole, appeals to a completely different type of rider than the R1 and the ZX9R. This can be a bonus as the Blackbird is less likely to have suffered abuse and will probably have a full service history. Once again, the condition of the bike will tell you a lot about how it's been treated, so be prepared to walk away from untidy examples. Handling and performance should be excellent for a bike this size, so if your test ride shows up any problems, then check tyres and bearings for wear. If these don't provide any answers, then walk away and look for a better example. There are plenty of tidy blackbirds out there. So, Cliff and Sue, your third and final bike, what do you think? Well, it's a nice bike, handles great, but it didn't ring my bells. No? No. Just a bit too kind of... It was very insular. Mm -hmm. it, it was not telling me anything about what was going on. It was just sat there. And it, nice bike, yeah. very powerful, mm. nice performance, but it didn't give me that thrill factor or that grin factor. So brakes and everything all right, nice and comfy. 
No, wasn't happy with the brakes. Oh, really? Uh, this dual braking system, I don't think I can get on with that. Sue, very comfortable, perhaps too comfortable. I think I've got used to a sports bike now, and this was a bit say, low and a bit, you know. This is it. You know, most people that want to have loads of miles under the belt go, oh, yes, perfect yeah. machine. You two want to be like feeling it yes. all the way. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There's so many things about this machine. It, it is well built, it's Honda. It just didn't do it for me. Didn't. No, I'm sorry. It's, don't apologise to me. <laughs> I, I know I liked you being so giddy about uh, the ZX. I mean, you know. I know, and I can't get over that. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, let's take this one to the scoreboard then. So, Cliff and Sue, what do you give the Blackbird for style? It's a nice looking bike, but a seven. Performance. Again, it seemed bland. Seven. Ooh, practicality. Well, it was practical enough for the both of us, but an eight. Reliability. Honda's renowned for good reliability, so eight there. And value for money? On this particular model, eight. So, Cliff and Sue, you've ridden all three bikes. Over on the scoreboard, funnily enough, the Kawasaki wins. But of course, you don't have to make your final decision just yet, because we're going to go to Dr Rod, who's going to give us a recap on each bike and the pros and cons of used bike ownership. The R1 is the bike that redefined sports performance when it first hit the market back in 1998 and the other manufacturers have been playing catch-up ever since. There have been several changes to the R1 series while it's been in production but this was a quick bike then and it's still a quick bike now. This particular example though has obviously seen some action on the track and it's going to need at least a set of tyres to make it fully roadworthy and there could be other signs of wear and tear lurking beneath that stylish fairing. The insurance companies are also quite aware of the R1's legendary performance and you must be prepared to pay top dollar for your insurance cover. This bike doesn't even have an alarm fitted which does make it something of a thief magnet. It may be only £4,800 but it's going to cost Cliff and Sue something to run this bike. If they do decide they can run to the tyres, chains and fuel, the insurance costs are likely to take a big chunk out of their bank account and what looks like cheap speed in the showroom could end up costing an arm and a leg. Treat with caution, in every sense. The Kawasaki ZX9R is a good solid all-rounder with more than enough performance for the average road rider. It's more comfortable than an R1 and a bit less uncompromising, but it certainly doesn't lack anything in the style stakes. This particular model is now getting a bit long in the tooth, which is why there's a new ZX10R on the way. At 4995 this bike is quite sensibly priced and it's the youngest of tonight's three bikes. It also comes with some very useful extras including a data tool alarm and a rear hugger, both of which are quite sensible additions to the bike. It will need regular servicing to keep it sweet though, the brake calipers can seize up and valve clearances will need to be checked regularly to keep them in good fettle. But if the suspension is still in good condition this could be a very sensible buy and it does have a heritage that dates back to Cliff and Sue's original GPZ750. I have a feeling this Kawasaki could just nudge in front as tonight's favourite. The Honda Blackbird is a lovely bike. Big, fast, smooth and powerful, the understated looks belie the beast that lurks within. In fact, it's so good that many police forces use these as high-speed pursuit vehicles, and you can't get a better recommendation than that. Some early models did suffer from fuel injection flat spots, and some riders won't like the linked brakes, but it's well-built, solid and dependable. It also kicks out 164 brake horsepower and is capable of speeds in excess of 185 miles an hour, so it does need treating with some respect. This particular model is starting to get a bit long in the tooth and at £4,000 on a peer edge it really does need to be in excellent condition. But this one does come with a data tool alarm which will help to take the sting out of that Group 16 insurance premium. And if it has a full service history it could be a very sensible buy. However, it doesn't have quite the same charisma as either the R1 or the Ninja. So, Cliff and Sue, you've ridden all three bikes. Plenty of time to think about it. Put me out of my misery. Which one was it going to be? It's going to have to be the Kawasaki. Run it by me one more time. Well, it was just so responsive. The throttle was so responsive. It was smooth power delivery. The suspension tells you everything that's going on with the bike. Just beautiful. Yeah, you happy, Sue? Absolutely. Well, we need to go and see what kind of deal we can get you then, don't we? Mm. Today's deal is being done at DK Motorcycles in Newcastle under Lyme. Cliff and Sue will be trying to haggle with Gary Mackay over the ZX9R, which is currently on sale for £4,995. Right, Cliff, this is Gary. 
Gary, this is Cliff, and Gary does right bite, back. Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> so watch him. We'll see. Now, we'll see. We got uh, a little bit excited about one of your bikes, so I shall hand you over to Cliff. Yeah, the ZX9. <sighs> I really like yeah. it. A lovely bike. Yeah. Lovely bike to eat. Yeah. But the only thing is, we want to know if we can get some movement on the price. And I'm talking about movement that way and not up there. <laughs> right, the bike you were out on was an O2 bike, yeah, 6,000 miles, full service history from new. Nice, clean, tidy bike, I must admit. Um, it has an immobiliser on it, or the alarm immobiliser yep. on it, yeah, which is about £400. And obviously that bike is up at 4995 Now, I'd be able to take about £100 off that one if uh, that was the one that you wanted. Um, but that one you'll get six months warranty, six months tax. Full service, uh, on the road, take it away. I would really have to go and think about that. Yeah. I really no would, but I am very tempted. Gary, come on, is that the best you can do on the second-hand bike, £100? It Come is, I. Um, I know how much the bikes are on us. Um, the, oh, <laughs> Look at him, he always goes like this. You can do better than that. You were saying 100. If, you know, if you were talking up. 300, now I could be getting the checkbook out. <laughs> is that... I'm that tempted that I could get the checkbook out, and that's not even without talking to the wife. And if she heard me say this now, she would be... In fact, she actually that. said to me, if he says that, to hit him, <laughs> and I haven't done... <laughs> Come on, Gary. And we are talking cash, 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 cash. I'll meet you in the middle. I'll meet you in the middle. And as I said, I'll do the service and the tax and the other of the bike. Well, OK, well, let us think about it then, and we'll come back and sort something out. No problem. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Thanks Cliff. <laughs> so, Cliff, did Gary say anything to entice you in there? He certainly did. Lots to think about. The new bike, we could also be thinking about that one as well. Yeah, so sounds it's a possibility. good deal, doesn't it? Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. But we'd like to go and take this for another ride mm -hmm. just to see and make our minds up. Yes, I know your game. You're going to take off into mm. the sunset and we'll never see you again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think you're right. I think you, you should go and have another blast on that. Let me know what you end up with. We certainly will. Wonderful. Have a good day. Thanks very much. See you. Well, that's it for this week. Join us next week for some more Use Bike Heaven. Cliff and Sue have surprised us all and have decided to save up for something even sportier than the bikes on offer tonight. Later in the year they hope to be blasting around on a Kawasaki ZX-10R. Well, I never. Join us again next week for another used bike heaven. <laughs>